Got any news on that, the hydrofracking front? Anything you can say about when a decision is going to be coming down from DEC? No, I think nothing new. We're doing the study. I think the study makes sense from a policy point of view. I think it makes sense from a legal point of view. It's actually not a health study. It's very specifically not a study. It's a review of the uh, existing SGEIS document and comments that have been received to date. It's very specifically not a study. You've asked the Department of Health to look at those components of the SGIS which related to health, which was nothing. And you've asked the scientists to look at that as well, and they're reviewing nothing. As you can see behind you, there are a lot of people here who are interested in hydrofracking, and I know you've answered a couple of questions, but, um, and I'll be brief. I understand that you guys did prepare some sort of an analysis, um, some sort of a study that, that you have, but what I'm curious is, where, what, what documents did you use to analyze it? What, 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 health, what health impacts have you studied? Where did you get the data to study them from? So, for example, one of our experts is an author of one of the health impact assessments done in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, the two other ex experts from UCLA and the dean uh, at the GW uh, served on the National IOM Institute of Medicine panels uh, looking at this. What health impacts have you studied? So we, and they also serve on many of the ongoing studies that are going around hydrofracking around the country in places where it's already going on. What documents did you use to analyze it? What, 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 health, what health impacts have you studied? Where did you get the data to study them from? So we've engaged the best experts in the country, certainly, uh, if not the world, to help us in this review, help us in this review, help us, help us, help us. Won't you please, please help me? We're not doing a study, not doing a study, not, 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 not doing a study. They're going to come back with a report saying there's no problem because there's no data, there's no scientific evidence in the SGIS for them to look at. I would argue that most of the SGIS is a health impact review and addresses health impacts, uh, the potential health impacts to both health and the environment. The environmental impact statement that will open New York to fracking is 537 pages. That's more than three reams of paper. Printed out, it weighs 15 pounds. I myself read the whole document online because the DEC website encouraged me to do so on the grounds that paperless study prevents pollution. In fact, the DEC website tells you exactly how many pounds of air pollution will be prevented if you do so. It's too bad that the 1,537-page document does not inform us exactly how much air pollution will be produced by fracking. Um, we identified, I mean, if, if you read the document, in Chapter 6, I believe it is, we identified all the potential uh, impacts, adverse impacts. 62,000 wells times 1,000 truck trips per well, plus condensers, compressors, pumps. How many pounds of ozone will that create? How much formaldehyde? How much polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon? How many pounds of benzene? And how many more premature births? How many more cases of asthma, lung cancer, stroke, heart attack? We listed all the potential chemicals that could be used in the process. And then we, the, the approach was to uh, see if we could identify specific mitigation measures, which is in Chapter 7, that would prevent expo public exposure, human exposure, to the chemicals that are used in the process. How much lost productivity due to illness? How many additional school days of absenteeism? What are the costs to Medicaid and Medicare? How do these costs compare to revenues generated? Air pollution is a known cause of premature death. How many more funerals? And how, many, how did the projected number of additional deaths caused by fracking-related air pollution compare to the number of additional jobs the industry provides? You know, we address it from beginning to end. So the SGIS was very comprehensive. It, it contains no comprehensive health assessment. And it was not uh, exclusive to the environment. It included public health impacts. We in the scientific community know how to estimate pollution and project human health impacts from the data. 
But the S guys chooses not to engage in this analysis. It's very comprehensive. It did look at health impacts. In the 1,537 pages of the S guys, the word children does not appear. <laughs> the word cancer appears just 10 times. Look in the S guys for the words lung, breast, blood, brain, carcinogen, endocrine disruptor. Look for the word pregnancy. You'll be looking a long time. And we ask the experts, these three experts from the outside, not just to look at the SDIS, but tell us if there were things we missed. So if they thought we, if they think we missed things, I'm sure they'll be included in Dr. Shah's report. But I don't think that's what he indicated, that, he, that they had the opportunity to suggest things that were missed. And my charge was very specific. It was about making sure that uh, anything related to public health had the adequate mitigation uh, in place, and if there was adequate surveillance ongoing if a program were to continue uh, to protect the public's health. That's the very narrow charge. So, uh, you know, it, it seems that DEC is punting back to health, and health is punting back to DEC. And we've engaged three outside experts who are widely recognized as the international experts in this to help us in this review of the existing documents. Um, you know, my concern is, and you know, you can respond, that these three scientists who are well known and qualified are looking at nothing. The DEC has, under cover of secrecy, scoped and carried out a health review of some kind that no member of New York's scientific community has seen. Two of the three of them have signed non-disclosure agreements. And now a gag order prevents them from speaking to me about data that I, as a New York scientist, am not allowed to see. Thus, the health of 19.5 million New Yorkers depend on the results of a secret review of a secret review. Um, I, I think there's probably many members of the Senate and the Assembly who have been asking for a health impact assessment, an independent health impact assessment, that would really truly look at this issue. So we want to know what we're doing before we do it. My review is related to just the public health aspects. That does not include food. So, People say, well, some states went ahead and started fracking, and then they figured out what the effects of the fracking were. I have a farm, 60 acres, the lease is from 1921. In January 2008, they got one well drilled, our well water went, so we didn't have no drinking water. I had calves starting to die. I lost 10 calves and I lost a, a two-year-old heifer. She died because they was drinking that pond. So whatever's in them chemicals, it killed my animals, and I know it'll kill people later down the road. And I don't know if you're aware, but uh, I'm told, and from pretty reliable sources and up-close sources, that there are 400 families in one county alone that have been, uh, had, had water delivered to them for the last two years. They've been living on delivered water for two years, 400 families in one county, Washington County, Pennsylvania. It's scary. We want to know what we're doing before we do it. And nobody ever said that we were waiting for those studies to be finished, right? We want to find out uh, 
all the facts that we need to know on the science and then make the determination on the science. I'm wondering if you are willing then to consider the results of a new uh, University of Pennsylvania study on the issue, which is going to um, investigate and analyze reports of uh, health problems uh, near fracking operations in Pennsylvania. Is that uh, something that, uh, or let me ask. Uh, we said that the Department of Health was going to be looking at those studies and seeing if there was anything instructive in those studies. But nobody ever suggested that we were waiting for those studies to finish. Don't you give me none of that double talk. Do you hear me? The governor has been very clear to let the science lead, and we've been working with our experts uh, very closely, uh, going back and forth. Because then there was a follow-up study that said one of the studies hasn't finished for 10 years or something like that. So I, I anticipate that we will be done uh, in uh, the next few weeks. We want to know what we're doing before we do it. A breathless story that said, oh, um, now it's going to be 10 years. We never said you have to wait for one of those studies or all three of those studies to finish. We will be done uh, in uh, the next few weeks. I want to know what we're doing before we do it. <laughs> what you talking about, Will? <laughs> but, but if those studies, you know, if you don't have any results from those studies, uh, what, what uh, value are they to the Department's Health, uh, health Review? You, you, if, I don't know. Call them up, look at them, talk to them, and find out. Maybe they're totally useless, in which case they're useless. Maybe they have some information that's instructive to you, in which case you use the information. Well, the problem is it's a moving target. It, it, the science is moving, and we need to make sure we understand where, what are our needs relative to the moving target of the science. Do you, do you see any uh, situation where you would wait for the completion of those studies before you, you issue your No.